Hey there, everybody. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. My buddy Dan O'Day is to my left, your right. I don't know. I never get my directions right, which usually ends up me being late for dinner. I, I am uh, across from David laterally. <laughs> we can't get more specific. Yeah. yeah, we are we are here, by the way, to uh, talk side by side about audiobooks, about ACX, about Audible, about production, voice talent, becoming an audiobook narrator, what to do. Um, uh, maybe you saw the historical video that Dan unearthed. That uh, yeah, and don't ask questions about how I got it out of the National Archives. But did you have to file a FOIA request? No, I went in after they were closed. I, you know, I really don't want to get into that. You really don't want to get into it. Okay, great. All right, fine. Um, <clears throat> we are going to uh, let you know that the ACX Masterclass, which is um, really a, a deep, deep, deep dive and a very complete dive into how to create, maintain, and be successful at building a business as an audiobook narrator, using ACX as the platform that you build your business on, and then moving that to other platforms and other publishers and producers once you've learned the ins and outs of how the business is in 2022. Um, you know, Do you know the, what version of the class that we're doing this one is? <laughs> that was the worst construction of a sentence ever. How Do you know what which numbered cohort we've created? Hello. Oh, I, I, it was my understanding we're still in beta. No, we're not in beta. We're actually out. So you, uh, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking, we started in 2014. I'm guessing you're talking about the yearly class plus the years when we had something called home study, mm -hmm. which is too complicated to get into. So is that what you're talking about? Like how yeah. many of those? Yeah. Well, I think the other day I heard you say 17. That's correct. That's correct. This is the 17th edition of the class that we've put together. Every single time we have gone through, and I'm actually still in the process of doing this just to make sure I haven't missed anything. We comb through the entire curriculum, all of the materials that we release, looking for things that have changed in the business since the last time we did the class, uh, things that uh, have been updated, things that no longer work, things that do work, uh, new options. Um, one of the biggest things that happened is when we first started teaching this in 2014, we were teaching a concept called hybrid stipend because at the time, ACX for some of their big authors and rights holders were offering a hundred bucks an hour in addition to a royalty share for narrators who produced books. for And, those. and they called that a stipend. They called that a stipend. Correct. And so what I thought when I first saw that was like, well, ACX is one place where that money can come from. But another place that money can come from is from rights holders who really want you uh, slash me as the narrator. And so we were teaching for the longest time the notion of hybrid stipend where the rights holder rather than ACX was paying that extra per hour fee. Now, for the last few years, ACX has been offering the option for rights holders to select Royalty Share Plus, which is exactly what hybrid stipends were. So we try to stay on top of things that haven't even occurred to ACX yet, but we really, <laughs> we really pay attention to that. What I want to do is give you the opportunity to ask Dan or me questions about audiobook narration, about uh, becoming a narrator, um, about uh, producing, about the process, about the tech, about the business. Uh, before we do that, though, it would be really imperative if you who are watching would jot down in the comments below and send us a comment, where are you watching from? I'd love to know where we're being seen. Aren't most we're... people going to say on my computer or on my phone? Well, on your computer, on your phone. I'm actually looking for a location geographically. Oh. And, then, oh. and then one other thing I'd love for you to do is the kids are saying this, so I'm going to say it. I would like you to smash that like mm. button so that it is inoperable at any time in the future because you don't really need it after you like what we're doing. 
Dan Preston is hey, watching Dan. from North Carolina. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. Uh, let us know. And you can also share this uh, either uh, on Facebook or on YouTube or on Twitter with your with your followers. Uh, let them know that we're doing this. You might know of a voice talent who really, really would be good at and really wants to do audiobook narration. We'd love to have them uh, along. But the really th the thing that I really want you to do is to hit that like button so hard that it just doesn't work anymore. Should they so, they should they wait a little bit to see if they like what we're doing or should they no, just No, why would you do that? Okay. It's not like the kids don't ask you to hit the like button before That's they even true. give you any value, right? And I know whatever the kids do, you do. I do. I do. I do. So, uh anyway, um I uh have been sort of doing live events both with Dan uh, on my own this week with, with people who've been helping us to spread the word about this course. Um, and we've been taking questions from people. We told people they could send questions in and they could do so ahead of time. And we'll take your questions as well. Once you've told us, you know, where you're watching from, what you're doing, please feel free to give us any questions that you have below. And if you're watching this on a replay, uh, then uh, you can also leave questions. Be sure to tag me and or Dan, and we'll come back and we'll answer the questions after the fact. Uh, Dan's already got a question. His yep. question is, do you do your own editing? Multiple takes on a delivery. Uh, wow. So this Boy, is like, you come to the right place. Dan has been setting up the, you know, he's got a curveball coming my way, and it's a fastball down the middle. It's perfect. So not only do we do our own editing, we teach you how to do editing in a way that is, very efficient and of very high quality. It's a an editing, a recording editing and mastering process that I created that takes advantage of the software that we use, which is Audacity. Uh, it's called the stair step method and we teach this in the course. And uh, that's the answer to the first question. The second question is multiple takes on a delivery. Uh, it's interesting, this is the second time today that somebody has asked about the actual in in the 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 throes of it process of voicing the audiobook uh there are some people who are under the impression that audiobook narrators will say a sentence or a paragraph um they'll voice it and then they'll stop and they'll go back and they'll listen to it and see if they like it and then they'll either say yeah that's fine and move on or take it again. That's not how it works in audiobooks. Multiple takes is for all other categories of voiceover. When it comes to audiobooks, you can rest assured that the audiobooks that you hear in the Audible Marketplace, on iTunes, wherever you find your audiobooks in podcasting, those books were recorded by simply telling the story and keeping the, the, the storytelling going. There's no multiple takes. There's no stopping down and listening to see what you like. Right. Uh, it's very much unlike commercials or documentary narration or animation. Yeah. It is a joyous moment of storytelling, just like you would do if you were telling a story to a child, uh, you know, at night before they go to bed. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't say, wait, and, wait, let me do that line again. Yeah, you don't kid. say, one fish, two fish. Wait, wait, hold on. <clears throat> one fish. Two fish. You don't do that, right? And you don't do that with audiobooks either. I hope that answers Dan, your question. Dan, if I if I can offer you something, um, a big difference between audiobooks and voiceover is the phrase that you put on the shelf while you're recording audiobooks is best take or favorite take. No, you tell the story. You screw up. Then, of course you're going to replace it but even then you're not going backward and listening we david's method is is really uh, ingenious and saves so much time so again the, the best take or favorite take or keeper you know none of those applies yeah it's it's important you know, I, I can only imagine uh, Audible as an example. They they survey their narrators every year or so, uh, usually in conjunction with the Audiobook Publishers Association convention. 
Uh, but they ask questions like, how long does it take you? How many hours does it take you in terms of work, recording, editing, et cetera, prepping to do one finished hour of audiobook narration that would be part of a book that is made for sale? And that ratio is a really important one because the lower that ratio is without ever impinging on quality, the lower that ratio is, the better for you because you can move on to another project and make more money. Um, they've gotten results almost perfectly consistently over the years of an average between six and 10 hours of work right. for every one hour of finished product. Now, for our students, they've basically said it's more like three to four hours for them, and some of them even less because of the process that we teach and because we try to give them all of the support and confidence in their work as a narrator so that they can do that continuous storytelling. Um, it's really, it's really an interesting thing. The process that we teach is designed so that you can, um, so that you can uh, uh, be efficient without, in any way, shape, or form, harming the product quality that you end up creating. So there you go. And also, you know, there's a, a another a benefit of the not having to go back and pick the best take is you don't stop unless you screw up. So, you know, while you're reading, you don't, you're not saying to yourself, oh, wait a second, that, that last line, should I, was that clear enough? I think maybe, oh, maybe I'll do it again. No, you know, right now I'll screw up a sentence. So there's David seven, <clears throat> there's David H. Lawrence. Okay, fine. I know when I screw up a sentence. But if you don't screw it up, then it's not a matter of could I have said that one better? You're telling a story. Yeah, yeah, and I think part of what uh, what's really uh, fun about doing audiobooks is that it's one of the most pure forms of acting because you're in charge of how you create characters. You're in charge of how you create the neutral narrator voice, which is a character in and of itself. Uh, you are part of. Uh, a, a long-standing tradition of actors who would love to have more control over their performance. And you get that with audiobooks. Uh, there is the opportunity for uh, the rights holder, your production partner, the person that's authored or holds the publishing rights to a book to, to be a part of the beginnings of it, making sure that you're pronouncing words properly, making mm -hmm. sure that you understand what they want from certain characters. Uh, but in the end, it's up to you to be the captain of your own ship. And it is really like, I remember when we were in radio, a lot of DJs would grouse about the fact that they, they can't choose the music. Why can't I choose oh, sure. my own records? Right. You know, I wasn't one of them. I, I was the one who was saying, come on, isn't there a computer or something that can do it? And let me concentrate on talking to people. But yeah, yes, yeah. people would, yeah would complain about that. Yeah. So this gives you a great opportunity to do so. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the conversation on whatever channel you're watching. We're actually broadcasting to Facebook. We're broadcasting to YouTube. We're broadcasting to Twitter. Uh, you know, the, the notion that we can do these lives on multiple channels is really cool. If you like what you're hearing, please let us know. Uh, if you have questions, please post them in the comments under whatever channel you're on. Um, we had some questions sent in before, mm -hmm. one of which was, I heard that you have to spend thousands of dollars <laughs> on equipment. And I'm wondering if that guy is full of crap. I don't know who that guy is. Uh, I can well, tell you wait, that- Let me, yeah. let's first, what year was this? Because- if it was this year. around 2000 or earlier, they were dead on. Yeah, possible. Yeah, and, and I've done that. I've spent several thousand dollars sure. on microphones, um, uh, both of which the most expensive ones, my Neumann U87 and my Sennheiser 416, MKH 416, are both sitting on the shelf. I don't use them. Um, I could, I guess, uh, but I use 
something much less expensive and something that may very easily cause a, a kerfuffle, kerfluffle, kerfuffle. Um, you may have heard the phrase, never use a USB microphone when you're doing voice work, when you're doing audiobook work. And to a large degree, that is a very truthful statement because what most people mean by a USB microphone is some very cheap $10 to $50 microphone that uses really cheap innards and doesn't sound very good. And you don't even realize it doesn't sound very good until you listen to audio being created with a good USB microphone. Mm -hmm. There are some uh, sort of unicorns in terms of microphones. And one of them is the mic that I recommend. And I happen to have it right here, Dan. Yeah. This, this is the AT2020 USB Plus. It's from Audio Technica. It's fantastic. And I think, I think I might even be able to switch to that microphone. And obviously David has it decorated for Christmas, which I think is very nice. I do. I have it. It's, it's nice. And I think that's it now. Does that sound different? I'm okay. not really listening. To when you. I get yeah, when, <laughs> when I get nice and close to the microphone, because this is a close play microphone, right. it should sound very different. And I'm also out of focus because of my camera. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's very different in terms of quality. It's much more full bodied, much you know, than my video camera or my video camera's uh, mm -hmm. microphone. So this microphone is awesome. I'm going to switch back to my um, my video camera microphone because that's an important thing to do because I want to be comfortable. Anyway, this mic has uh, the electronics of a Pro Tools M box or a Scarlett or, uh, you know, you name the higher end bridge or interface that one would use with a studio microphone. That electronic set, rather than a really chintzy one, is what's in the bottom of this microphone. And that's what makes this such a unicorn. You know what, Dave, David, um, I never mentioned this to you, but it's been in my head for a while. Um, for anybody here, the next time somebody, like, let's say you're talking to somebody, you know, you're going to take the class and you're going to tell them about the microphone that we recommend, and which is inexpensive. And if you have an engineering type person and they say, <laughs> You know, they laugh at you. Give me a break. USB, forget it. USB mics are crap. Here, here's your resp the response I recommend. Why are USB microphones bad? And I why mean, do you ask, why do you have the mask up? What's that? Why do you have the mask up? I still can't hear what you're saying. Why do you have? You, you really can't hear what I'm saying? I couldn't hear the last part of it. Is my mic not? Uh, no, no, you're fine. You're just mumbling the last oh, two words. I, I'm not mumbling. <laughs> I said, why would you have them ask that question? Because what's their answer going to be? What would you guess? Uh, the, uh, the, the innards are cheap. They're not high quality. They're not, you know, yeah. That's so what I to the engineer, well, if you had a USB microphone and the innards were not cheap, but they were high quality, would that remove your objection? Right. And actually, I don't think the conversation will go that far because they'll they'll just you know fold their arms and refuse to engage. But that's the thing. The only the only reason most people believe USB mics are all terrible is most of them are pretty bad. But there's nothing that prevents some uh, one of them from being good if the company wants to make the investment of time and ingenuity and money to make a good microphone. Yeah, same thing with uh, with audio workstations, digital audio workstations, the sound software that you use to record and then edit your work and then maybe even start to master your work. Uh, I was in one of the, um, what I call the snarky Facebook groups today and, um, the uh the the question was asked uh hey i'm using a uh, voice memo on my phone and it's not really working for me i don't even know how to edit this stuff and clearly it's somebody who for, thinks how hard could audiobook narration they're using it for audiobooks yeah 
Oh, yeah. that's, that sounds yeah. great. And that just drew the venom out of the woodwork. But one of the questions, one of the responses was, if you're not using Reaper or Pro Tools, then you're subpar. <sighs> and I said, well, uh, I don't think that's a universal truth because there's a lot of very complicated software like Logic and Studio One and Adobe Audition that would be just as difficult to use as Reaper and Pro Tools. And then there's Audacity, which is what I use. And I don't think my work is subpar. In mm -hmm. fact, I would be willing to say my work is pretty good. I mean, you know, it's it's what I do. So um, the the notion of not being able to use Audacity or Twisted Wave or whatever you want to use, uh, as opposed to those two options, probably isn't something that, but, but people know what they know what they've been right. successful with. And and the engineer friend or colleague who is advising you, when they built their studio and they selected their equipment, they did their best, they did their research and they bought the best they could afford that was it. And then they stopped researching. They stopped educating themselves about what else is out there because they didn't, they have what they need. You know, they're, they're not looking, they're not checking every week to see, is there a better microphone? Well, I got what I need here, you know, and it makes sense, but it, it's, things change. Yeah. And I, I just, I actually just did a podcast on this. There are, are those that are inveterate tinkerers. You know, it's like, if anything, they're going to upscale what they do. Well, how can I make this better? I like how it is. It's doing fine. I'm booking work, but there's always ways to improve. And you know, the, 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 the notion in that podcast episode was, can't you just leave well enough alone? Not leaving it well enough alone to be mediocre, but once you get something that you really like, something that's really working for you, do you really need to go find something even better? Do you think it's going to book you more often if you make this? And, and, and there are people who are like, how dare you stop me from being the best I can possibly be? I'm like, no, that's fine. It's just, if you're using it for the reason of I need to book more and so it's probably my sound, that's not necessarily true. Uh, Dan uh, popped in with a follow-up on the microphone. A high-quality USB is better than a cheap XLR. So true. So true. Um, yeah, so we teach that microphone. We teach Audacity. We uh, talk to you about your performance in both fiction and nonfiction, and we coach you through an entire session in two of our live classes about performing in those major categories. There are some subcategories that we look at and get into as well. Um, the ACX Masterclass is a four week live, two session per week, course that shows you not only what tech to use, not only how to perform in the world of audiobooks, but also how to build your business and build a relationship with your production partners so that you become what Dan has called the narrator of choice for rights holders. How'd you come up with that? I don't, I don't think it was mine. I, I think it was, um, if it wasn't yours, I think it was one of our students in the first year. It was, I wasn't me. I wasn't, yeah. I, I, me. Believe, I believe it was one of our students the first year. All right. I, okay. I would have thought of it eventually, but yeah, eventually. <laughs> no, but, um, but also what, what I, what I, I do use that phrase a lot. Another phrase I use a lot is project manager. You're not, yes, you audition, but that doesn't mean Please, please hire me. Please, please, please. Can I do it again? I'll come back. You know, uh, can I have five callbacks? Uh, 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 oh, I'm driving home. Oh, I should have done it this way. I'm going to turn. None of that. You're, if the rights holder and comes to you and offers you the job, you are the one who is in charge. I mean, it doesn't mean you order the rights holder around, but you're the... Well, in addition to the obvious, which is a good narrator, somebody who's going to, a good producer in terms of the technical uh, end, good sound, good storytelling. In addition to that, 
the one thing the rights holder, and rights holder is a term that applies to authors, publishers. It might be in a state that inherited uh, the property. So you might think authors uh, or rights holders. Um, the one thing they're looking for is someone they can trust to take over the entire project. Yeah. And it's not like they're going to, okay, great. This person looks great. Let me go find nine others who also might, I might be able to trust and then I'll weigh them and pit. No, they're look, because when you look at ACX profiles, you will discover that 99% of them make the rights holder run for the hills. And that's the single biggest thing. It's like, I believe it or not, David, uh, I'm not the handiest person around the house when it comes to fixing things. <laughs> I know. You're really? not gonna, yeah. You're not going to believe me. Um, yeah. And I've been saying for a while now, what I need is a foreman for this house. You know, I just need somebody, uh, hey, Dan, you know, your what's this is, you know, oh, well, what, 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 are, what are our options? A, B, C, I recommend B. Okay, would you do that? Yeah, goodbye. Yep. And I'll pay premium for that. The problem is sure. who do I trust who – has the ability, the knowledge, uh, and the trustworthiness. And in a way, that's what the rights holder is looking for. And when they find you and, and they have a good experience with you, guess what? With their next book, they, they get to choose. Should I start all over and listen to all these people uh, to their demos? Or should I give David a call? He did a good job on the last one. Uh, David, you free? Uh, are you available yeah. then? Yeah, and I think repeat business is something that we don't often consider in other categories of voice work. Certainly with explainer videos, that's fairly common. Uh, with commercials, not so much. Certainly with animation, uh, with video games, um, you always have to audition for those things. It's almost never a, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I remember. And forming a relationship with a rights holder is, is a big, huge advantage when it comes to the noise floor that exists on ACX. And what I mean by that is there's no licensing or certification or permission required to create a profile and hang out your shingle and start looking for work on ACX. There's no, there's no registration other than creating your profile. There's no, like, you have to prove to somebody that you're good enough to work on the platform like you do on almost every other area of of voiceover and acting that we do and you, you have to demonstrate that you have the skills needed to open a gmail account that's, that's pretty right. much it yeah so uh the what that does is yeah it makes it easier for you to get on acx to get things going it also makes it easier for everybody else and currently there are five hundred thousand plus <laughs> narrators that have profiles on ACX, I would imagine probably 200,000 of them are dead. They've not been, you know, they were created a, a year or two ago or more, and nobody's ever done anything with them after that. But there's still this noise floor of people who don't know how to use microphones properly, don't have any training in voice work, don't have any training in editing or recording. They just kind of like, like this guy, I'm using voice memo. You know, there's, there's this noise floor that you have to get beyond. And people that would be watching this live video, is, they're members of a self-selected group that pay much more attention to being professional about their work. Like the question that Dan asked about multiple takes on a delivery. People that aren't voice talent, they don't talk like that. They don't use that language, you know? So the problem is, though, that noise floor exists. And when you get good training, when you get the knowledge that you need to create a great profile, to do great work with your auditions and your demos, uh, to do really great work as you're walking somebody through the process of putting together the audiobook of their baby, um, you cut through that noise floor in a way that I don't think a lot of people appreciate. Imagine the rights holder who has listened to dozens of people 
who should never go anywhere near a microphone. They think that being in the bathroom is a great place to record things because it like sounds cool. It's reverby, you know, or who knows what. And then you come along and you sound not only like you know what you're doing, but like you care about their baby, about their creation, something that, you know, we'll spend a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, in some cases, just a couple of days uh, doing the audio work to, to turn their book into an audio book. They, on the other hand, have likely spent two years, two decades on creating that product. And to them, it's like a member of their family. Right. So they really have to, uh, they really have to trust that you're going to handle their stuff well. Uh, we have a lot of people that come out of radio. Dan and I both came out of radio. And so did Dan, Dan Preston. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we, uh, we find that people that are doing radio work have an easy transition to get into audiobook work as long as the vestiges of that DJ voice that they may have had or that talk show voice that they may have had, if they just give themselves the permission to be themselves, right. as opposed to the, the character that you play on radio, you know? Well, yeah. Ba basically, if, if you're one of the many people who, when people meet you, they say, God, you have such a great radio voice. Well, that might be something that's going to need, some pulling back on because probably that is not your completely natural voice, yeah. but you're comfortable with a microphone and you're comfortable talking to people. Yep. Yours is much easier with a commercial voiceover. And you hear this, you listen to demos on ACX and God bless them. People put up their voiceover demos, which is, None. Non audiobook voice, non audiobook, you know, commercial yeah. demo, animation, whatever. Right. And then they're very proud of it. And they don't understand, well, that's completely irrelevant. You know, that's not helpful. But also, you just listening, you, you realize, oh my God, that person is reading this audiobook exactly the way he does a Chevy commercial for radio. Mm -hmm. You know, they all knew, da, 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 da. And it's not difficult to make the shift, but you've got to make the shift. And the, you, the starting point is, it's not about my voice. Uh, I don't have an engineer putting a limiter on, on everything that pumps out of here. Um, it's about me, the story, the one listener, and that's it. But you do you do have to make an adjustment from the way you have used your voice previously. If I could, uh, if I could make one more ar kind of arcane, but I find interesting point. One one reason for this, and it, it's a hugely important factor. Comparing if you do a, a commercial voiceover, compare that to audio books. The single biggest difference, I would say, is that for commercial voiceovers, you're doing, let's say, radio commercials or TV, but you're doing commercials and uh, those commercials, let's say radio commercials, and they are intrusive. Meaning, you know, there's an, the expression is radio is an intrusive medium when it comes to advertising. And that's because nobody came to your radio station to hear a commercial. They came for the programming and now a commercial comes on and you got to grab them right away before they, you know, change stations. Well, guess what? Someone's listening to your audio book out of the thousands and thousands of audio books they could have selected. They chose the one that you narrated because they want to listen to it. Yeah. So instead of, Oh, got to grab them from the first word. You know, they put in their earbuds and they get on their exercise bike or the, whatever it is they do, and they want it to be, they want to listen to it. So you don't have to overcome that. Yeah. And I think also people tend to worry that if they don't have a radio voice or a, a really great voice, whatever that means to them, resonant, deep, sexy, uh, feminine, who knows what 
great voice means. Um, they worry that they are not able to participate in the world of audiobooks. And I think much more important, and it's borne out by the people that are superstars in audiobooks, much more important is the ability to tell a great story, to be a great storyteller. And that means um, caring about the characters, caring about the, the, the story itself. It means having confidence in your ability to carry a tune, to continue on with <clears throat> the actual story for a long period of time. Storytelling a lot more important than some, you know, continuous feedback from people. Well, you know, the ladies, they really like my voice on the phone, <laughs> you know. Here's the bad news to the radio people. There, there is no request line, sorry, uh, in audiobooks. So, so uh, acxmasterclass.com slash join. The, the link is right there on the screen. It's also in the comments below this. Um, we are closing registration. This is the last event we are going to hold where we answer questions. We are then going to have the, the registration open through tomorrow night. It's been open all week. Tomorrow night, Friday, March 25th at 9 p.m. Pacific. That's when registration closes because we start the class, the live first live class, is this coming Monday, the 28th. And between now and then, it's your opportunity to join us. If, you're, if this is something that trips your trigger, we'd love to have you. And if you look at the registration page and you look at the description of the class, it gives you the entire curriculum, the entire syllabus, all the things that we teach in all four weeks of the class and all the things that we release in terms of material and training and video and audio and text. Uh, at the very bottom of that page, I don't know what got into Dan, but Dan created a couple of payment plans in case uh, the 1995 that the course is, is too much to come up with all at once. So you might wanna take a look at that uh, the payment plans are at the very bottom of the page that you go to if you follow that link. And if you read the really fine print, you'll see that money goes directly to me. There's a special address. It's my Bitcoin wallet, and we won't tell David about it. Hello? At any rate, uh, we, we, we want to make sure that you get every opportunity to know that it ends promptly at yeah. 9 p.m. on Friday they're night. all every year. There yeah. are people who contact us. The next day, three, I've had people contact us like a week and a half into the class and say, oh, I just got around to opening the email that talked about the, well, see you next year. Yeah. And yeah. it sounds mean, but the dead, the deadlines that we give, that's a promise we're making to the people who do what is necessary to meet the deadline. Yeah. And so go ahead. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you told if this is something answer. that you want to be a part of, is this something that you think to yourself? And, and certainly I've noticed that people tend to add audiobooks to what they're already doing, either as a voiceover practice or as an acting practice. They tend to go, oh, wait, I'm an actor. I'm a performer. I'm a voice talent. I can do that. Um, it is among the lowest hanging fruit, if not the lowest hanging fruit of all audiobook categories. If you go on ACX right now and simply go to the search function for titles looking for auditions, you'll find, at least it was earlier today, that close to 2,000 titles are waiting to be narrated. And with ACX, you don't have to be invited to audition. You might be, you might even be invited to do the project. And we teach you how to be careful about that notion and how to avoid scams that exist on ACX and other mm -hmm. uh, casting platforms. And in addition to that, what we teach you in the class is not only applicable to ACX and Audible and Amazon, they're owned by Amazon, but also to other platforms like Find Away Voices and Spoken Realms and Authors Republic and other publishers and producers like Penguin Random House and Tantor and Blackstone and Brilliance and Dion and Listen Up and any number of things that will happen in the future. What we teach in the course is applicable to all of those 
opportunities. So it's not, it's really, the class is called the ACX Masterclass, but it really should be more like anybody who's like ACX Masterclass as well. <laughs> That's just kind of unwieldy. Um, well, yeah. And the good, the, 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 let me just finish this one sure. thing and then Dan, go right ahead. Um, the good news is if you join what we teach you, the classes, the recordings of the classes, the Q and A's, all the materials that we release, once you join, you have access to those forever. So if you can't get to one of the live events, you forever have... or until the internet explodes. Okay, thank you for that. And the final thing I wanted to say, and then Dan, go for it, uh, is our community. You know, you can just hand somebody a textbook, or you can send them to a website, or you can tell them to watch a YouTube video and go, good luck. That'd be great. Uh, or you can nurture them, which is what we love to do. We, we love to take care of our students from the beginnings of the course all the way through to the end. And a big part of that is our community, both on Facebook and for those that don't like Facebook, don't want to be on Facebook, there's another parallel community, sort of a parallel universe on our website. You don't have to be on Facebook. And you become members of that right off the bat. And there is not a more caring anti-snarky community in existence. We make sure that that's the case. And our community is filled with graduates who have gone on to do amazing things and they're willing to help you because they've been where you are. Yeah, if you're beginning in audiobooks, you you will r run into stumbling blocks or something you don't understand or, wait, this isn't doing what I thought it's gonna do. And with the mastermind group, all, people there already have had that problem and solved it. Yep. And I don't, I don't know to what degree we can take credit for the for the success of the mastermind group because we just thought it would be a good idea when we started the class for their you know people to be able to talk to each other. There was something about the very first class, about the people in the first class. They just bonded like a family, and they set the tone. And now, I mean, if you go to any uh, online groups for just about any topic, you've probably seen the trolls and the, you know, somebody says, hey, looks like a nice day today. And somebody says, oh, yeah, well, what about you know, it just doesn't occur. Yeah. And as David pointed out, we do, we kind of enforce it, but we just keep going what the very first class started. And all, yeah. all those people are still in the mastermind group too. And we're talking about roughly 500 people at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing that I think is really interesting about the ACX masterclass is some of our graduates have gone on to do amazing things as audiobook narrators, but also be very much of service to the community. Uh, J. Rodney Turner, who's you may have met in one of our free videos, um, you know, he's done 211 books so far uh, in the eight years that he's been doing audiobooks. So you can break that down to one every couple of weeks. That's that's not and, even 30, 30 a year, like, you know. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. So um, he uh, also is. Uh, really active in the audiobook community at places like VO Atlanta and at the APA at APAC. Uh, he's one of their ambassadors of goodwill. Uh, Bob McCoy, who's one of our graduates, is roundly considered one of the biggest industry experts on scams on ACX and how to avoid them. And part of our training is he uh, did a, a video with me talking about scams and how to recognize the scams that are out there. And he constantly updates a, uh, a sheet that we have on current scams and how you can recognize them and how you can avoid them. Stuart Goffey, who is one of our, our, uh, our graduates, is, again, a, an, a, an awesome expert at Audacity. Yeah. He actually created a newsletter based on what he was seeing with the ACX Masterclass and with the other classes that I teach outside of ACX Masterclass. And he created uh, Stuart's Audacity Tips. And, you know, he's the guy that we call on when Audacity is behaving differently than we expect, uh, which is a nice way of, of putting that. Sometimes it happens, like with all software. 
Sure. Um, but we have those people who've been through our process, been through what we've done, and have done amazing things on their own and and with their specialty. Uh, Jay Rodney is now the voice of choice, the the narrator of choice for Zane Gray novels with with Tantor. Uh, wow. Zane Gray, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what Zane 40, 40, Zane 40, 40 to 50 titles. I, I haven't looked it up, but that's my Crazy. guess. Yeah. 40 to 50. So we would love to have you as part of the ACX Masterclass for 2022. Uh, again, we have registration that's open now through tomorrow night at five at uh, nine o'clock Pacific Pacific time, and uh, the the course begins on Monday. We get everybody matriculated over the weekend. It's delivered via Zoom. It is held live on Mondays and Thursdays. But if you can't attend on Mondays or Thursdays, there's recordings, and the Thursday night course, the Thursday night classes are Q and A classes where you can ask anything you want about what we've taught you during that week. And if you can't make that, you can send your questions to Dan. He'll ask them for you and we'll answer them. Or again, the, the community is there for you 24 seven. You can ask questions in either one of the parallel communities and you would be amazed at how quickly either we respond yeah. or the community responds. Yeah. And you, something <laughs> you, I was so fascinated about what you're saying that I forgot what I was going to say about the videos, which is got it. If you want to, if you want to do audio books, if you want to take the class, but you're thinking, yeah, but I don't know, there might be a conflict with my job a couple of nights or with personal things. Every year we have some students who never attend a class live because of time zone differences. I mean, we've had, people attending from Dubai, you know, from the UK. Um, and yeah, I have a student this year who's going to be in Australia for the whole time. Yeah. So sometimes it's due to time zones. Sometimes it's due to conflicts with other stuff they got to do. And here's the thing. We do record all of the live classes, but they are live when they're being recorded. So when you watch a late night talk show and – funny and it's spontaneous and you see all this stuff well that's recorded but because they recorded it live and they preserved the feeling of the live show that's exactly what we feel if, if you were on the west coast and we see it three hours later than someone on the east coast might so you if that if that's holding you back or if that has you concerned that's not a problem um, and in the mastermind group, it's not like some people, it's not like we can tell, oh, that person uh, only watches the videos. They, they haven't been there live, so we're not going to answer there. You know, everybody's in it together. Yeah. Uh, you'll also get a special welcome kit uh, from me uh, on behalf of Dan. Uh, you'll meet the people that help you with the course, like Rachel and uh, you'll be in a in a community that really is supportive and cooperative and general and uh, generous. Um, the the thing that I always find happening in the last few days of our registration period is people waiting till the very last minute thinking, oh, they won't close the they won't close the, the page that it'll be there on Saturday or Sunday. It won't. Just so hmm. you know, it won't. I got other things to do. We're starting the class on on Monday. Our first uh, weekly study guide is is on the the, the proofers bench right now. Um, and I would ask you this question: If you're on kind of, yeah, I'd like to do this, but uh, if you want to do this, and you're thinking, well, is it right? For me, like, um, do I have enough skills in this space? Am I the right person to do this? Do I, like, all these big famous people are doing audiobooks, celebrities do audiobooks. If not you, then who? You're here because you do other forms of acting or voice work. Or maybe you're not even in the business, but you've always wanted to be, right? Currently, you're a customer service rep or you're a salesperson or... In many cases, we've had professionals, doctors, attorneys, engineers uh, wanting to side grade into it because it, it, it feeds their soul, not just their wallet. 
And I would say to you to consider two questions. If you're feeling that imposter syndrome creeping up on you, ask yourself, well, if not you, then who? Who is better uh, qualified and, and motivated to do this than you? Likely nobody. If this is what you want to do, that's what you want to do. You should follow that lead. And also ask yourself about time. If not now, then when? Why, why wait? And I'll, I'll go ahead and answer that for you. I know why. Because you're concerned that you're going to mess things up. I got to know more. I got to straighten all my pencils and sharpen them and shuffle my paper together so that it's all nicely squared up and my, my desk needs to be cleaned and, you know, the dog needs to be walked and all that before I can actually get ready to get started. And the truth of the matter is you are going to mess up. You are going to have a problem. You are going to make a mess. And that's okay. In fact, it's great because it shows you what not to do. It is filled with wisdom to make mistakes and make a mess and fail, but failing forward, failing and learning from your failures. And if you wait, that's just delaying all those failures, all those challenges, you know, so if not now, then when, when is it? And certainly with us, hopefully coming out of the pandemic, but having learned so much about what can be accomplished from a home studio. Uh, this is like, I don't think there's been a better time to be a part of this, this community. And the hockey stick growth of audiobooks continues. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, David, uh, in terms of reasons that people have, they wanted to take the class, but they haven't yet, not, not now. It's I believe the two most deadly words for anyone who wants to tackle something new, and that is convenient time. You're waiting for a, con a more convenient time. You know, when you don't have any stresses in your life, when family is running smoothly and work is running smoothly and everything is just great, and you're sitting back thinking, oh, what should I do now? There's no such thing as a convenient time. There's yeah. there such thing as a good time, and that's when, that's now. That's when you know you want to do something, it's making it happen. Yeah. Uh, listen, I want to thank everybody for attending. We're going to wrap things up now. I just want to leave you with one last uh, uh, word. Uh, I love the feeling that I get when I start something new, when I start with a new class, when I start with a new title as an audiobook narrator, when I start with a new pursuit. I just started uh, doing audio description narration for films this past year. And, you know, it's just one of those things that I didn't even know existed. And it's a thing. And it's aligned with dubbing, but it's not quite dubbing. It's, it's very interesting. All, all of these things get me excited. And I hope that when you look at what you've chosen in terms of your journey in life, your path as a performer, that audiobooks, if it's part of that that joy, if it's part of that, I'd like to try that. I'd like to be on Audible with a title. There's nothing quite as delicious as that moment when a book that you've narrated and produced for a rights holder goes on sale. And then you go and look at your dashboard and yeah, you might be earning a buck or two per, per, uh, per title, or you might be earning more. Um, and you see that your work is generating income and will continue to generate income for some time. If you're doing a royalty share, royalty share plus, there's nothing quite like that feeling of accomplishment. And huh, I might be a little bit more of the master of my own destiny than I thought. So I urge you to think about that. Any last words, Dan? Um, my, yeah, my last words are the, you did some mind reading before you said, I, I can, I know why you're not taking the class yet, or you're not, you haven't stepped forward for audiobooks to some people who are watching this. Um, I, I'm getting a strong sense from somebody right now. I won't name them. <laughs> There's a letter M, B, R, L, one of those. Does any of the letters of the alphabet mean anything to you? Aha, I'm hearing you. And what, this is what I'm hearing. So many people have come out of the ACX Masterclass raving about it. They've got like almost 5,000 titles right now 
selling on Audible from ACX Masterclass graduates. I guess I have to believe it's legit. But what if I take the class and it turns out I'm the one person in the world who is too stupid to be able to learn it? <laughs> and, you know, for me, uh, a whole lot of things that I've done have been for me having that fear and uh, fear of not being able to do it and saying the opposite to myself, which is, do you really think everybody there is smarter than you? You know, and I don't, you know, I think probably some of them aren't. So that's it. That's my last thing, David. Cool. Steve Gannett just uh, popped in the chat and hey, said one of, one of the, I think he means one of the best, best. or well, you know, no I way. Think it means it's, something good. It's one of the decisions. One of the decisions. Life, yeah. yeah. But I think it means one of the best decisions of life. Love the biz and these two honorable, generous men. Oh. If you're on the fence, jump. And uh, again, I'm going to assume he means jump in and take the class, not jump away. So, but thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank it's you. always very, 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 very kind of you, Steve. Yeah. All right. We're going to wrap things up. ACXmasterclass.com slash join. You have just a little bit over 28 hours to get there. Um, so, uh, yeah, he says best. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, registration closes tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Pacific. And Monday and night is our first class. Monday is our first class. Uh, Dan, thank you. I'm looking forward to getting the class going. Thank you for joining me today. And we will, uh, we will see you inside the class, hopefully. See you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, everybody.